In a world where 99% of people are desperately trying to fit in, the 1% understand that success is found when you stand out from the crowd. I'm Jack Henderson, and this is the Flamingo Sundays podcast. If you're looking for the 99%, you're in the wrong place. Matt Steinwade is one of Australia's most renowned real estate sales agents. He's a keynote speaker, he's an author, and he's the founder of the 31 Minutes Movement. But Matt's life definitely did not start out like this. In this episode, we're going to delve in to Matt's journey and how that has shaped his outlook and the way that he lives his life today. We're going to go deep into why Matt thinks energy and frequency can dictate a happier life. We also unpack the importance of building a personal brand and being authentic and consistent to get to the top. Matt Steinwade, mm. Esther Hicks says, if something you want is slow to come to you, it can be for only one reason. You are spending more time focused upon its absence than you are about its presence. What comes to mind when you hear that quote? No, I don't agree. Well, I think it's more, maybe you're not ready for it. Okay. Yeah, I think things come at the right time. You might need to be a bit more ready. So like, for instance, if I was more successful when I was younger, I think I would have just probably gone back into drug abuse and wasted money and all of that sort of stuff. So I think success comes at the right time and maybe you just need to wait a bit longer. Interesting. Yeah. How would have teenaged Matt answered that question? Or answered that quote? <laughs> um, he would have no idea. Yeah. So there's been a lot of development. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Teenage Matt was just a roaming animal so <laughs> with no boundaries. Yeah. So he wouldn't have answered the question? No, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'd be partying somewhere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Can you unpack that a little bit more? So it sounds like what you were saying there is, is <clears throat> success or whatever it is comes to you when it's the right time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think you've got to be prepared. If you, you know, people talk about success as in money or people getting a big house or whatever else um but sometimes it's not always the best thing either you know like the journey towards it is i think sometimes more enjoyable than getting the thing so learning to become the person that needs to be able to handle that um the maturity these the you know even the ability to to manage different situations um yeah it that all comes in time. It's that old saying, what goes up really fast usually comes down really fast. Uh, even in real estate, when people say, oh, you know, I did a million dollars in my first 12 months, I'm like, yeah, I don't know, that's a good thing. Right. You know, uh, some of the best agents that I know took a long time to get established and get some traction. Like a long time. Jason Boone, one of the best agents in Australia, 10 years before he even got any traction. You know, myself, probably six, seven years, you know, but we're still going after 30 years, still moving along, you know, and I, I think it teaches you a lot. And is that something that you feel like you've learnt over your journey of, of life? Yeah, I was very impatient. Yeah, long time ago. Um, you know, do stupid things as well. Like when you're younger, um, when I was like 28 or something, I bought an E500 Merc for like 200 and something thousand or whatever it was. What a dumb decision, you know, like this huge loan. I thought, oh, well, people think I'm successful. Uh, terrible decision, you know, and now it's like Jordan. You know, Jordan, uh, five years ago, he comes to me. He was actually talking about on a podcast this morning that he was considering going bankrupt because he had an Audi TT that was worth 20 grand or something. He had like a $50,000 plus loan on it. He had no money. Um, and he was like drowning in just debt and, you know, looks great. But, um, and he's, he was thinking about going bankrupt. And I said to him, you know, you're not doing anything like that. Get rid of the car. Um, I gave him an old ute and he drove that around for a couple of years and slowly paid the rest of the loan off. And now he's got three properties, stack of money, worked really hard, but time, time's so valuable. And, and for someone who hasn't had the journey that you've had and mm. the lessons, like mm. 
how would how would someone who hasn't gone through it actually realize that like um well there's two ways to to learn it's your own experience or look at others it's very hard to look at others and mm. have the same sort of depth of understanding so i don't know that there is a, a way to learn but you know it's like it's that old that old story about the two kids grew up with an alcoholic father and one became an alcoholic and one became really successful and they both said what other options did i have you know mm. so i think um the whole thing i've learned out of all this is your job is to become your best that's all learn about energy learn about frequency do something you really want to do um you know your podcast studio here it's pretty impressive like you're obviously giving it a big crack you know i'm sure it didn't start like this but you love it by the looks of it well i hope you do <laughs> unless you're being fake um yeah, no, but when you I do, love it yeah when you're getting up especially you, when you get guests like you <laughs> it's a challenge oh yeah <laughs> but when you get up and you're doing something you you want to do i was talking to emma about her party thing up in newcastle when she was talking about it and like, human behavior is my thing yeah like i love watching human behavior and she was talking about you know the kids and the you know the, what she does on the weekends and think you could see a light up and mm. all that sort of stuff you, you gotta you gotta have that you know like the, there's nothing more powerful than doing that you know getting up every day and doing something you really want to invest your time in because once the time goes it's gone it doesn't come back and and for the majority of people i had aaron carrasco on in the last episode who was a founder of Pinot picasso the, the studios and mm -hmm. um the thing that motivated his journey when he started was the financial rewards of of that and often they don't come like you think they're going to come mm -hmm. um the, is like from from what you've learned so far now reflecting back on the journey would you have done things differently no. because of that or, or you feel like no no why no why because i'm like i'm probably the happiest i've ever been i've had three marriages we've got six kids soon to be more um you know i've been homeless or drug problems and relapses and business and all sorts of things you know it's horrendous if you look back and you sort of go oh, i don't want that life mm. but it's been good you know it's been good now like and married to a girl that genuinely i love being with um she's fantastic and there's a huge age difference but um but things happen at certain times like you know I, I was 22 and she was being born you know it's like what's the chances of meeting and and going through all of that so why would, would i change it no i wouldn't and i know people say that but at the time you know when there's on Australia's Most Wanted and had to go hand myself in and I don't know, something happened and the judge gave me a second chance and I had to do community service forever. It was the worst time. I was trying to work, do community service and all this sorts of stuff. It took me eight years to pay all the fines that she gave me and whatever. But, um, you know, the, the things that come out of that is, you know, maybe it stopped me using drugs. I don't know, you know, because I, I was like a gutter drug addict. You know, so I, all of that stuff sort of adds up over time. That's why you just sort of... What are you, there's a great saying that you never challenge beyond what you can bear. Mm. And I think it's true. And, you know, I've had some really huge challenges, but you're able to get through them. I look and look back now and look at Jackson. I caught him drinking the other day in, in the park with his mate. <laughs> he's 23, he's an adult. But we've got a bit of a thing going on. Like, you know, he went down the drug path and he pulled himself back around. And um, we've got a bit of a thing going on. Like drinking's not really like, you know, it all sort of starts there. And, um, but you know, he's going to fall over every now and then, but with my, with my ability to guide him and a healthy level of respect between each other, he'll be successful. I don't think I would have been able to do that with all the things that I've had along the way, you know? And that's the true meaning of the, uh, the journey is the gift, right? Yeah, it is. You're big now on, on frequency, you yeah. mentioned energy, you know, how you show up in the world and obviously you didn't have all of the learning through life. Yeah. You probably wouldn't have, you know come to be the person you are yeah has this come about recently or no. is it just that you've been more public about it recently yeah what what um when was the when i guess when was the moment that you realized like my life was crap you know my life was just went from one crisis to the next literally you mm. know like one problem to the next and when i sort of started learning a bit more about goal setting and things i was like i was i was feeling better this is like 20 something years ago and i was feeling better and i was like I look back and I was like, I can see why my life was always like up and down because that's what I was doing, you know, like off my head, recovering, doing whatever to get by, blah, blah, blah. And then um, 
and then I was like, if you're sort of feeling good, things seem to go good. So I started looking at, well, Brian Tracy first and mm. then Zig Ziglar and all of these people. Never really got into Tony Robbins. I couldn't really listen to him. He's got a bit of a weird voice. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's like a bit like, eh. but then Esther Hicks, I came across her and then Joe Vitale and all of this, but I kept coming back to Esther Hicks and I think she's the real deal. And then I started absorbing myself in it about 20 years ago. And then I could see that the more I controlled my emotions and the more I stayed steady within myself and kept my energy radiating in a good way, it doesn't always work perfectly, mm. things would match every time. So I started to see this is a more of an energy game than it is an action game. Action is important, but not after energy. If you're feeling not that great, and hangover is the best example, you've got a hangover. I said, Jack, go out and perform today. You're not going to do it. Like, you're not going to feel great. So I started to match all of that. So it took me 20 years to really get it. So in the last few years, I've probably, um, I wouldn't say master, but I've probably made it a, a life pursuit. So, and, and that was because you immersed yourself in it and once you understood the, mm. the, the, the premise yeah. of it. Studied it every spare minute of every day. And um, for, for someone now, the majority of the people who listen to this podcast are millennials, people chasing it. Chasing what, is, what is a millennial? I hear the word. Like, what is a millen uh, millennial? I, I class millennials anyone, myself and younger. So, to, so everyone in here. Anyone from 26 mm. and under is, mm -hmm. uh, mm. is a millennial. So, and the majority there of the... What am I then, dinosaur? Like, it's, it's hard to understand. If some, if some guy's never been through anything... It's or not girl, hard to understand. What do you mean? Well, like, I, I think, you know, if, if someone who's had a pretty easy life, not, not a tough life growing up, good, good family, good parents, um, but they're just stuck in that, got a, got a job that I'm not 100% pumped with. Most people are going out it's on the weekend. It's hard to understand about that. You don't feel good about it. You don't want to do it. So the, the, that, the that's way to... That's the guide. That's the guide. You feel good about it? do that if you don't don't and if i didn't want to be here i wouldn't be here wouldn't be sitting here going oh, i don't really want to talk to jack well blah, blah, blah. i wouldn't i get a podcast request every day all day and one just came in before to say no nah, i don't want to go i don't know i don't know them i don't want to go yeah that's that's the indication you want a successful life follow the emotion of excitement of interest of passion of kids parties Kids' parties are the best. You find a whole lot of passion, enthusiasm, and eagerness in there. They're doing what they want to do. Give them a bag of lollies, a few balloons, they're happy. But it's not, not more complicated than that, you know? And you want to go drink and write yourself off and all of this and stick coke in your arms and all this sort of stuff. Do it, but you won't perform. You know, you, you won't. Your frequency, you just go to the opposite. So you want to worry about things and be anxious about things and you want to absorb yourself in the news and all of that sort of stuff. You, it's going to match because we're like a magnet of energy. And it, we get all of these prompts and we just ignore them. I was just thinking about you today and you just rang. Wow. Well, why don't people go, how did that happen? I was just feeling good thinking about someone they rang. It's the little things that people need to pay attention to. Not the winning in a car or... Uh, you know, a million dollars falling out of the sky and hitting you on the head. And then all of a sudden you go, oh, wow, that's like a, a magnetic frequency match. No, it's the little things. Even the emotion of feeling good is the best thing you can have. It's so true when you, th it always happens when you're like, oh, fuck, I was thinking about that person or you were talking about them and then they call. Yeah. Or Jackson went to the coffee shop a couple of times. He keeps getting a free coffee. Uh, the girl might like him, I don't know. But, but the, the moment, and even, even a, a car accident, the littlest things like, or you hit a squirrel. Is a squirrel Australian? No, possum. possum. You hit a thing on the road. It runs out. Think of the timing of that. So think of the timing of you getting ready, waking up, going through all your stuff, leaving the house, blah, 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 and you drive down the road and you hit a, a possum. You could not manufacture that if you tried. But your vibration, you're probably rushing or you're... You know, angry or something like that. Yeah. Look for the little things and they'll guide you how you're feeling. They're just talking to you all the time. You ever been in the flow and things, you get no red lights, things are just great. You don't even notice the crap stuff that's going on. 
Like people talk about the market. I don't even think about the market. At first all. question I asked. <laughs> you do, and and people say, "What's the market like?" I don't know. I sell houses. That's what I'm. That's my. That's what I do. I just want to find someone that's got the money and wants to buy a house and go find it for them. I, I don't have any any interest in what people say the market's doing, and the reason for that too is when COVID came. That's a whole other story. But when COVID came, every analyst was wrong what the market was going to do. They all said it's going to go down. It all went up. I pay attention to these people. It's true, and, and the 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 funny thing about it is, you start to talk about drinking and drugs and all the rest of it. And I've struggled with drinking and drugs, and we'll stop. Le- I have, yeah. Good. I've gone Never sober. Do it again. So I went sober in twenty twenty one for right. the year. Twenty twenty two, I thought I've got a better relationship with alcohol now, so <laughs> I went quarter to quarter. So no drinking, or so I thought it was going to work. And like last year, which I, and then I, I put it on the market. I blamed the market. I said, "Fuck you!" Last year was just a a year full of like reactive behavior and bad shit happening and I put it on the market when the reality is I think the reason for it was because I was consistently drinking, consistently, mm. um, you know, not feeling good and mm. now this year, it's been a, a month now I've been sober again mm. and everything just happens so much easier. How, things are happier. Yeah, I don't know why people just don't do that. Like, mm. it, you know, and you live in that space and then in six weeks time your mate goes, oh, let's go out for a drink and you you get so caught up in the impulse of like, and I've been there. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying speaking from experience. Yeah, totally. Um, you get so caught up in the impulse that you, the feeling good part it's really hard to get. It's really hard to get and sustain. So my my whole focus now is just to live in the space of feeling great. That's it. Nothing else. I don't care about cars and houses and things like this. I'm building a massive house, a beautiful house. I don't even give two thoughts to it because it's like the better I feel, the better the house is going to be. That's that's how it works, you know. All of your pursuit in success with time, if you just stay feeling great, this is going to turn into whatever you want it to turn into. World famous, whatever, you know. I, I couldn't care less about fame. It's not, not interest. I just like making content, you know. But I think sometimes people, they, they get, it, it's not hard, but you've got to say no to the things that are going to derail you. Mm. Like I literally weigh it up now. Someone could put five lines of cocaine here and I wouldn't even look at it. I wouldn't even be, I'd go knock yourself out. I'll see you in a couple of weeks when you feel better. <laughs> I would. But before, I'd be the first one there. You know, like, oh, yeah, no, I want to feel great right now. But then I would literally spend a week dodging all the calls. Matt's got the flu. Matt's got this. Oh, yeah, no, he's not around. Whatever. And then the next week trying to feel better. Sorry, Jackson. My son's got to listen to it. But, but it's the truth. Yeah. You know, it's the truth. Um, it's like when I married Tara, I had every single person around me saying, don't marry a younger girl everyone but Jordan didn't um and Ash didn't but I just did what I felt was right in here best decision I've ever made and just on that have you experienced that in the past when everyone's going to chuck it in their two cents got their opinion yeah, my whole life's been that when when you're going really well yeah. everyone's on on your tail and, yeah. and when everyone's mm. when things are not going great you know people are doing the opposite if you're in a good space and you get a prompt you must go with it you have to like because you're you're in a frequency that the universe is talking to you say go this way go this way go this way you must go with it and you don't have to go with it like that instant it's like slowly keep moving towards that like slowly keep moving towards that and you'll end up somewhere magical and all the other drop kicks that are saying giving you this advice about what you look where they are you know it's like jackson who's sitting over there his friends like his friends are just drinking partying i'm watching all their stories and all this sort of stuff He'll be that far progressed in 12 months time. And 12 months is a great, you know, one year, you can literally transform your life. Mm. And all of the friends that are like giving him crap for getting fitter, like Jackson is a different person two years later. Like he was, he was fat, he was angry, he was not just hating life, drinking, drugging. He is a different person today. And if he stays on that path, he will be somewhere amazing. But all the people around him who's giving him crap about, oh, you, you don't hang out with us anymore, whatever, they'll probably still be there in two years' time doing the same thing because their frequency hasn't changed. Mm. That's how important frequency is. And you can speak about that because you've been through it, right? Yeah, been through it. Yeah, absolutely. For yourself now, obviously fitness is a huge part of your life. Mm. What else do you do on a daily basis to, to make sure that you stay in that know uh, that flow and in mm. the zone of, of, of a strong frequency I protect it with everything so I wake up without an alarm clock you must wake up without an alarm clock because you're when you put um, 
like Jackson has the worst alarm clock I've ever heard. It's like a, <laughs> like it's terrible. Like imagine waking up to that, you know, and I say to him all the time, don't set the alarm clock. Cause whether you wake up at three and you don't get any awards the earlier you wake up, for some reason, people think successful people have to wake up at 2.30 in the morning. That's just rubbish. You wake up when you're ready because when your tank is full, your body will wake up. You don't need any more. Your body just doesn't trick you and say, oh, this is make him stay in bed all day. You'll wake up at the appropriate time and then I get my thoughts flowing for the day. And I genuinely say, oh, today's gonna be amazing. I feel great, things, things are flowing, whatever. I just tell myself a little story to get the energy going because when you sleep, you totally reset. So your energy from yesterday stops. But mm -hmm. what a lot of people do is they wake up and they say, it's an Esther Hicks thing. And they start thinking about the fight they had with someone yesterday or the listing they missed yesterday or the money they don't have from yesterday or this and that or whatever. Or, and they start thinking about that. But your, your frequency goes straight back there. So when you wake up, you get this moment to say, what am I going to give my attention to? So I do that. And then I listen to two songs. The same songs? Best songs. I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't got it, but it, this kid, 14 years old, he sings this song called The Joke on this America's Got Talent, literally makes you cry. Amazing. Fantastic. In laughter? No, it just hits a frequency. Oh, right. It's so I'll watch a couple of songs where I'll set my frequency inside. So when, when you're watching a song and it moves you that much and it hits, it hits a frequency that will make you cry, it doesn't get much higher than that. Mm. So I'll do that. Uh, I've got about five or six that I listen to. Um, another one is Daydream, the the girl that went on that audition for Daydream. You know that song? No. Come on, get with you the sing times. It for us? No, I can't. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's why, that's why I just work on my body. I can't sing. I can't do nothing else. That's it. <laughs> Next episode on the podcast, folks, will be Matt singing Daydream. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you sit, do that, and then I'll go eat my pods, do my thing, go do thirty one minutes. And I, I make sure I get into the day without any rushing. Rushing is the enemy of frequency. And then I'll get back from training. I'll have breakfast, sometimes with Tara, sometimes not. Then I'll get ready and I'll get to work when I'm ready. And I'm, I never book appointments in the morning too early. Would, would you say that you could do that even as a 20 year old? Yeah, you could do it in, coming at out. any point in time. You've got to want to, though. You've got to design it. Yeah. Like, you have to consciously design it, not just... It's not, it's not going to happen. You know, I used to overload myself, and I'd have anxiety, and I'd be, like, trying to get into the day, and i have 50,000 things going on. Take a slightly longer-term view. Design... I'm helping Jordan with this at the moment. What's your ideal day look like? Like, what is your ideal day? You know, like, how many appointments can you manage? How good is it going to an appointment when you've got space and time around you? Mm. Like, in you there. I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I walked in here. First thing Emma said, we just got one guest left and another one's coming. You know, it's like, I get that. But it's like, this is like, convey a belt, quick, next one. You don't really get time to reset and get it's into the worst. it properly. And it was, yeah. it was, it was, it's funny mm. the thing you said about, you know, a lot of people think successful people have to wake up early. Like, I've fully designed my life around, like, what's, what's going to be the thing that gives me the highest chance of being the best or, or, or becoming what the, is it? the most successful. I just, I just try to mimic people who have been there and done it. So, no. but it's so funny because every single person is different, right? Listen like, to you, listen to you. you, your body, you, you will, you will tell you, you know, like since I don't have an alarm clock and, um, blah, 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 blah. I, I wake up at three fifteen every day, three thirty, three forty five. Today was about three forty five. stayed in bed for 25 minutes you know, just get my thoughts going, whatever else. Um, like Robin Sharma wakes up at five o'clock. Tom Penos wakes up at five o'clock. That's them though. Like, you know, then, then what do you, how do you want to spend your morning? Your morning is the most important part of the day because it sets the tone. Mm. So, you know, people spend so much time, um, you know, planning their grocery shopping or, you know, like, they'll sit there for an, an hour watching the news or Netflix or whatever else, but they spend no time in the morning actually getting control of the day. You know, if you set your day up frequency-wise, you'll get so used to it that when you get off your frequency during the day, because something happens, Jordan says to me all the time, he goes, if something doesn't work out, you just move on. 
Yeah, because I don't want to go there frequency. I'm so used to operating in a, a zone where that feels great. Why would I dwell on something that doesn't? Because everything's going to match that. Mm. And when you understand that, that when you you know get up in the day ready to go, why would you not set the right tone for how you want the rest of the day to be? It's the most powerful principle in your pursuit of success. And you might wake up at 6.30. So what? Who cares? Like, that's, that's you. That's when your tank is full. The number one thing is have your tank full. Because if you wake up any earlier than that, you're not going to feel completely in the zone and clicked in. You're going to feel like 75%. You know those times when you get out of bed and you're like, okay, okay. You're already on the back foot. Yeah, yeah. stay in bed. Stay in bed and have a, have a bit of a snooze off again and just let yourself... Your body's not going to stay there. Like it, it'll, You'll get up at some point. That's the first thing. Do you ever go to the petrol station and fill five-eighths the tank and go again? <laughs> no, you stand there. You, you'll invest, I don't know, eight minutes to fill up the tank and then go and pay for it and go again. And, and how good does it feel when you've got a full tank of petrol? Our, our energy is the same. Mm. But our energy is more valuable because it's designing each day into the future. So why would you not design today to end up somewhere in a couple of years that's going to be pretty phenomenal? But people get stuck. People like get stuck. They hate their life. They hate this. They complain about this. They complain about their partner. Divorce their partner then. If you don't like them that much, divorce them. It's true. But Move on. And, and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to separate the assets. Yeah, I don't want to separate. But... I had so many people saying to me, oh, no, don't get divorced. You lose half your wealth. Who cares? I, I built 10 times back after that and real quick because I'm like clicked into where I want to be. I'm not saying everyone go get divorced, but if you can't fix it and you hate your partner that much, just don't be with them. It's like people think there's some person making them do things. You know, it's not at all. And even like getting fitter, you know, there's so many people saying, I've got, to, I've got to get fitter. Like I've got to start training tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And I talked to them three months later. Oh yeah, I've got to, look, I've got to stop drinking. I've got to get, I've got to start training again. Like just start today, like a little bit. And it's all about the little bits. It's not about these, when you try and do too much too soon, you're not going to sustain it. I just do a lot of little bits every day of what I want to do. I'll very rarely do stuff I don't want to do anymore. And then you said something just, just before around, you know, if something happens during the day that is going to lower your frequency, you just move on with it. Yeah. Two questions on that. What would be something that would usually happen that may... Anything, like a fight with Tara. Like she's, she's, she's moody, mate. Like, <laughs> she's, no, she is. Like, she'll, she'll get moody. Like, over, like, I'll do something. What was it today? Today was something. I let the dog run in and jumped on her and she just was like, why'd you do that? I just don't get it. I just don't get engaged, engaged in it. I'm like, well, upset her. No problem. Outside dog. And I'll just give her a kiss and move on. I could be like, oh, yes. Why well, you be like that? You know, let's, I'm right. You're right. I was not interested in being right. I'm interested in being steady. Happy. And then how, yeah. how do you let go of, like, that's a good example, but how do you let go of other things? So like, you know. Don't give them any airtime. I think people have a comp, I don't know why. It's not that complicated. Like, if you punch me in the face now, I've got a choice. I can work out that you're an angry man <laughs> and you've got problems and I don't really want to be a part of it. I could punch you back. Either or. I choose the first one because I'm not interested in a fight. You know? Mm. If someone doesn't want to use you for business, they just don't like you. They don't want to use you. They've opted for something else. Why get all bent and twisted about it? Go find someone that wants to use you. You know, easy, oh, I should have yeah. done this, should have done that, should have done, they charge lower fee, they charge this, and that. well, maybe, but they just didn't want to use you. There's a thousand people out there that do, mm. do you know? Mm. Um, I think sometimes we're like, it's like we put more pressure on ourselves than we need to. Just choose how you want to live. Look at the things that happen when you're feeling great and be there most of the time. Once you do that, you'll be free. You'll be free of all this rubbish that's going on in the world, all this um, whatever, all this mandates and control and this and that. Like, I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'm pumping along. I'm so, like, in a zone that I can't even explain to you. And I'm listening to a 14-year-old boy singing in the morning. The choice. Like, yeah. Like, so good. Yeah. Everyone should just boycott the news. 
never watch it again. Yeah, we don't own a TV. Yeah, no, neither do I. But, you know, people sit there and watch it and it's like every bad thing in the world that happens, they go condense it into an hour and they sit there like that and watch a crash in the Philippines. Like, why? Yeah. So true. I'd rather walk around the garden. Singing. Yeah, <laughs> singing. Exactly right. Cuddling Jackson. <laughs> with, uh, with, with the 31 minutes, like, that's... that's uh, a movement that's yeah. you know taken off and, yeah. and a lot of people get behind it yeah. your personal brand is you know the strongest it's ever been yeah have you thought about branding a lot during your journey or is it just oh yeah just come about branding's my thing yeah how, how did uh how did you get serious about branding or, or what made you well, get i did it in real branding? estate like but within real estate I always was like uh like i wanted to be the the face of real estate when i was young mm -hmm. and did all of that so you know i like i developed a good profile in real estate, especially amongst agents. Um, now I, I want to create a brand that spreads across the world and has a good thing about it. That's my mission now. Yeah. And is it not, not necessarily real estate focused, right? Cause I would say 99% of your content now is no health and estate. fitness and frequency. Yeah. <laughs> and you wouldn't even know. Who that you're cares? Right. I sold this house for 5 million. So who cares? Yeah. Like I just like doing my thing. I like breaking records quietly in real estate. If it happens, Jordan makes sure everyone knows. Jordan that, knows. Anyway. <laughs> Jordan does it all for me. Sales for January. Yeah, yeah, just... exactly right. Yeah, yeah. But no, I think there's more to it because if you nail your personal side of things and you nail your, you know, fitness, health, nutrition, all of that, everything benefits. So when people talk about results in real estate, I'd rather talk about the thing that makes you successful in real estate, mm. which is yourself and living a life that's a, a higher frequency, like. It. I know I go on about it a bit, but it's actually where the secret to success is. And that then flows on into everything else. Everything, that you do. the partner that you pick or that you attract. People like, people like wonder about partners and things like, how do I get a boyfriend? Well, become like so attractive energetically. They'll just you'll have a choice of a million of them. Yeah, just got to make sure you choose the right one. Then you I. do. That's the hard part. Got to kiss a hundred toads before you get a prince. <laughs> <laughs> how? Uh... How do you like? You obviously see a lot of agents now, right? You've got the yeah. you got the school or the or the online yeah. program. A lot of people follow you. I don't stuff. really like training agents. That was like an Emmy thing that she wanted to do with me. So I don't like training agents. What's the reason for that? I don't like it. Yeah, like I just I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy um, saying make this many calls and mm. you know like write this letter like it. There's definitely a system, but I don't. In, I don't actually enjoy it. Right. Yeah. So the the, the brand building things. If there was, you know, a younger agent or a business person. Yeah. Um, how would you, or, or how have you built your brand? You've obviously just been authentic to yourself and what yeah. you. I just live it. And yeah. then just yeah, document. I just, that. I just do it myself, and then people go, ah, yeah. oh, that's interesting, or they go, oh, that guy's up himself, or whatever they say. All the, yeah. I get all different messages, um, but. Yeah, I just live it and people tend to sort of go, oh, okay, there's something in that. But I do it for a long time. You know, like I just do it every day. I'm not, I'm not trying to like influence people. I'm just um, living it and people see the benefit in it. So it tends to generate a community. And, and you often, I mean, with every brand in the world, the reason that those people are so big is because they're, have stood they've stand, stood out from the crowd yeah and the reason they've stood out from the crowd is because they've just been authentically themselves yeah and then I yeah. Think a lot of people get the masses get caught up on trying to you know be someone else oh let's be this person or let's be you know this person that's when the, the reality is the secret is just, just to be themselves by the yeah time. that's the key you know it's um it really is the key and it's a hard one because like i do want to build a brand with 31 minutes definitely do because i think it's i like it and it's um and it, whether it's business or personal and all that i think it touches all of it and it and like i'm very aligned with what it is um but yeah you got to be authentic you said it then like being really authentic it takes time you know like it like even the amount of followers people shoot for a number of followers and things like i don't i don't exactly like i'm more mm. like i just like i like producing the next bit of content and the next bit of something and um yeah, so like I authentic, authentically really like, um, you know, moving along, not documenting exactly, more just like sharing it, you know, and how that touches other people. I could really, I like that. And, and is that something that adds to your frequency when you get the messages where people say, mate, this really helped me or I love? <coughs> yeah, I know. think so. 
Mm. Never really thought about it. I think so. Yeah. Um, What's the reason that you, you want to build a brand now? Because it's not like you need any more money. Like you've, <laughs> you know, like you've got a good business. That's, that's not gonna, you sound like Jordan. That's not gonna, like, oh, you don't need more money. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> what, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's true. You know, a lot of these people, you look at your Gary Vaynerchuks and your Grand yeah. Canyon, sure, it adds to their wealth and their... And their Mate, I just wear jeans and a thing. I don't need... I, I drive an old Land Cruiser, right? Like, I don't... I'm 200 not, series, come on. Yeah, I'm not really like... You know, I've got all this stuff going on. What I live, like, it's an extension of me. Like, it's right. all the things that I... I think would be really beneficial if you want to perform really well at your optimum every day, not just sometimes, like I'm talking every day. How do you do that? You know, like how do you perform at your highest level? It's, it's very hard. Mm. So you, you feel like the next stage in your journey is to go, well, this is what all, this is all the things I've learned over yeah. my, my journey and yeah. then be able to, to, to monetize that into something that's going to benefit other people. Monetize? So. You love the money thing. No, I don't really care. Like, well, you're not going to give the shirts away for free. No, no. That's, money makes the world go around. Money's yeah. all good. Like, but whether you're worth $10 million or $150 million, it, life doesn't change. Mm. Like, I'm not going to buy a different T-shirt. I really want to scale it. You know, I'm, I'm interested in that. So more, more just to see what I can do. So it's like my body. I want to create the best body in Australia at 50. 50, I heard that, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. And then I'm on that journey and you know, it'll take a little bit. I've got reasonable genetics. So how we'll many see years how have you got to get there? Like a couple of years. It'll just happen when it happens. You'll see. Uh, every single how thing. How old are you now? 50. 50. Oh, you're at 50 now, right? Yeah. I was going to say, how, how so, old? So every single thing I've done, I just pick one thing and go after it. And I just keep banging away at it and learning how to do it. And, and everything I've done like that, I've achieved. So it's like, I'm, I'm interested to see what I can do. Yeah. Have you found it challenging to scale in real estate yeah. from a business perspective? Yeah. What do you feel is the most challenging part of scaling a real estate business outside of your own personal brand? Well, fortunately, I've got a fantastic business partner. So he does, he runs all of that, but you've only got so much time in the day. So I still want to just sell upper end real estate, work with clients that I know. Um, I probably want to be more specific with that. I enjoy selling real estate. Mm. Like it's, it'll always be part of my thing. So um, Jordan's definitely rising up and he'll take over the the volume side of it with Trev. Um, but scaling yourself is very difficult. I've got a good team, like an amazing team. And they protect my time very, very well. But um, how do you scale that? Mm. You know, and, and then the more offices, the more tricky it becomes. But um, I would ne I find it funny when people go, they're a good salesperson and go open a business. Because I think they're two completely different things. Absolutely. My business partner, we've been together 28 years. He's an, a fantastic business guy. Like his business is his thing, not mine. I, I don't think I'd be able to run a real estate business properly. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Nate, um, the way we like to end all our podcasts mm -hmm. is uh, is the way that we start them with the quote. So yep. um, you, you, I'm sure there's a quote or quotes that you live by or, mm. or that you resonate with. Um, I just said I didn't. Before I got on here, <laughs> you said there's you, you many. You listening. You said there's I, many. I said, oh, there's many quotes, but I don't live by any. What, what, what's one that, that resonates with you? If it's going to be, it's up to me. Okay. And, and yeah, why? It's a bit old cheesy, to be honest. This, it's good. This quote thing. But it's not, but it's not one. I just made it up. Yeah. Like I just like, I don't well, why, walk why around. Why was that the first thing that I don't walk tomorrow. around saying to people, it's going to be, it's up to me. Why was that the first thing that I'm came I'm only saying it because you needed to fill a space on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would, have you would have fucked up the next show if you didn't say that. <laughs> why, why was that the thing that comes to mind though? Out of, out of That's the only one I really know. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't have like this whole filing cabinet of quotes. It's, it's easy. <laughs> and it's, you've lived by it. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Oh, she wanted to do it for me. No, that's yes. good. <laughs> Mate, I thank you for coming on the Thanks, podcast. Thanks, appreciate it, Jake.